Hi, I'm Florence Hutchins. Hi guys. My name's Danny. See you finally. I'm Marina, by the way. So, Florence, you graduated with first list honors from the Slate School of Fine Art, and Danny, you were on Central Saint Martin's both in 2019 in London. Since then, you have been working on stuff with shows in galleries such as Saichi Gallery and all over the world with your first two show at the Cabinet Lane. You both post current themes. Danny posts more than music imaginary, and Florence, you explore a bit more of the everyday element and the poetic of the quotidian. Where does the interest for this topic come from? I guess I've always been really into music. I play guitar. It's everywhere. I I always have like a record on at home or the radio on or I'm listening to music in the studio all the time. So it's a big part of like who I am. And there's no audio to a painting, so you kind of have to make up a visual for it. I'm sure if you played every single instrument in one of the paintings at the same time, it would sound absolutely dreadful. <laughs> but I really like the way the instruments look. I guess, yeah, it's a bit of like a kind of real love for the instrument, the music and everything in between. Yeah. yeah. I suppose in terms of my paintings, the subject matters is everything that kind of surrounds me. And that definitely stems from drawing and drawing from life. I like to kind of take the kind of sense of humour in everyday objects. And I like that kind of element of how my paintings, like there's a subject matter that's clearly something of the everyday, but how when it kind of merges into the abstract. But lots of people assume they see different things and I like it when people have come to the studio and their full paint pots were handbags. I remember one time I did this painting of uh, clothes on a chair and someone thought a jacket over the top of it was a mermaid's tail. And I like when people bring their own narratives to those kind of everyday elements of still life paintings. How does it feel with, to play with this texture and this depth in your paintings? What do you pursue? If you put thin paint down, you have to put slightly thicker paint on top to cover it and then it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. We both work in a kind of way that's kind of a, like not erratic, but active. Big brushes, quite like in pots and paint and all. Our studio is really, really messy. I think collage though is the like- Collage is a great, yeah, a great yeah, flattener. It's so kind important. Of. I think it's a great way to cover a surface that paint can't achieve. Like if a bit is really annoying me and on massive scale, you can just cut a two metre square bit of collage, glue it on and it's instantly covered. And then if you don't like that, you can physically rip it off. And that physicality of collage, I think is so unachievable with paint completely flattens an image. And that with the oil paint and that kind of depth of quality compared to a real flatness is something I enjoy exploring in my work. Mm. Those extreme contrasts. How does your artistic process uh, begin? How do you start a painting? We always want to uh, make the process of starting a painting really fresh and exciting. I always draw, like drawing is so much more accessible. You can be doing it when you go away on holiday, you can do it on the train and you can't paint like that drawing, whether it be something that ne not, isn't necessarily in the painting, helps my work so much. But I think what's so important in my practice is like that sense of destruction in a work when like, you know there's like that voice in your head saying like there's something not quite right with the painting and you kind of know you have to destroy it to make it better and it's a sense of knowing you've got to paint it out or like collage over it or just kind of take it apart to put it back together. Like sometimes the painting is working in one way but you have to know you have to get rid of that painting that might be working in a little sense, but to make it work better. And I find that is very important. I don't have like a set way of starting a painting. I tend to do either a couple of layers of different colors. I've got a load of just acrylic that I just do like washes on. And then on top of that, I will then like paint it white again and maybe start collaging and stuff. Yeah, it's almost like having a bag of kind of colors and then, or like whatever bag of things you can use and then building something out of a bag of things you've got. And that's how the instrument paintings are. It's almost like paint a trumpet this way. So what if I put that there? And then if it doesn't work, I can pull it out and kind of 
almost like freestyle, but less, I guess more impromptu and improvised than freestyle. I don't know. I think they're all the same thing. <laughs> you now both share a studio. How do you interact with this space? How like share the studio? Our studio is quite big. So we've got like two different ends. So it's almost like there's a line up the middle. There is got, a line up the middle. There, and like we don't kind of interfere in each other's space. And we, when we're there, we usually both have headphones in. We, we're not commun- we don't talk. <laughs> we yeah. hardly talk when we're there really. We're just painting. We'll just kind of interact when we eat our lunch. We tend to eat lunch at the same time. Don't not not at always lunch. either, but it's quite nice. Like we can just share that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's a great studio though. We love being um, where we are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun dynamic. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It's a, it's a great thing because Flo has to walk through my studio. I'm, at, I'm by the door and Flo's at the back of the room. So Flo has to walk through my studio to get out. There's there's a lot of interaction in between the studios and I think seeing each other paint and working in the same studio, a lot of things do kind of come together. Like we both have collage in our work. We both mm -hmm. use like a lot of color. We both kind of paint with oil paint on canvas and we both have these kind of sort that of semi domestic, domestic yeah. or like still lifey, at least at the moment kind of themes mm. so there's a lot of interplay between our like work as well as like as just conversation and stuff in the studio mm. what would you say interests you more about the other's work <laughs> good question um the two paintings in the show that of Danny's, like the black and white music, just of the musical instruments. Those two, when Danny was working on them, he worked them on the floor and his whole process during that was so interesting. Like he kind of drew it out in a really interesting way. I think there's about eight layers to that, like stages to that painting, but every single stage was of like, he could have finished it then and it would have been like a, a gorgeous piece, but he kind of realized, and that's why I really respected when he was making that, like, the consciousness of knowing even though you could have stopped then not to have and like kept working them to this point where they kind of um got like to the stages they are now and they're like two of my favorite paintings in, the, in that show i love those um i think the qualities in them that kind of cardboard and the real flatness of the and like in some of them you can still see the primer can't you and that's so rare in your paintings yeah the white one yeah, yeah. That's the, and yeah. like that complete contrast of the real flatness and the real thickness and it works so well. <laughs> uh, I think I admire Flo's bravery of image. Mm. I think that's the thing that I've always, since we met, always been drawn to by your work was the boldness and the kind of unapologeticness of the way Flo kind of renders objects, even if they're like really simple shapes, like a circle somehow they always end up being the best circle that could be on a painting. If, if I'm ever stuck in the studio, I just look across the Flow studio and realise that <laughs> everything that I want to do in a painting, I can just find the answers across the room. <laughs> so yeah, Flow's Thank you. energy, bravery, boldness. I'll remind you of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Compliments. <laughs> it wouldn't be 2020 if I didn't ask you something about Corona. <laughs> How is your feeling about like, this whole pandemic situation regarding art? I think it's been a good thing for artists, but then I think it's been a terrible thing for artists as well. And then I think in wider terms of the art world, things like the Artist Support Pledge and stuff have been really good. I've discovered a lot of artists through that and I don't know, I think the community of artists has become a lot stronger. I think people have got people's backs a lot more and people mm. are, uh, yeah, I think there's like a, a real kind of support network, which I think was there before, but I feel like now people realise how important it is. I guess you don't realise what you've got until it's, you can't do it. It made, like you said, people realise like, 
how much people loved things that happen in the art world, like private views and going to see work in the flesh and how important that is. And even to people who don't make art, how important it is to go and see art if for everyone. It's kind of opened a lot of people's minds to what can be done at home just on and a kitchen important, table. Yeah, you know, how important, yeah, how important that can be. And um, I think people have realised it's nice to have stuff in your house as well. Yeah. <laughs> like nice, it's nice to have art in your house. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye.